Currently, utilities collect millions of images each year of transmission and distribution assets. So the ability to automate that process would save time, cost, as well as help to provide a more objective result for analyzing the images. Through the use of drones, the utility's ability to gather vast numbers of images has outpaced their ability to analyze those images. As a part of routine inspection programs, utilities collect all kinds of imagery of their structures, multiple perspectives, different angles, different resolutions, a lot of times resulting in thousands to millions of images. In terms of the number of images, it's accelerating greatly. The advancement of drones, new cameras and technologies are really making this image review task a, a problem that humans are having trouble keeping up with. As an example, one flight we did yesterday was a 10-minute automated flight for one structure, but it resulted in 200 images. Right-of-way patrols can be quick flybys. It may result in 10 to 20 photos per kilometer, whereas comprehensive inspections could result in 50 to 200 photos per structure. And utilities only get value by taking that raw information and turning it into an inspection report. So that review task can take hours, and it has a cost component to it. So what we're trying to do is leverage AI and machine learning to automate that process while having a, a really good operational quality. At Duke Energy, we have transmission assets in six states. And in terms of number of structures, we have about 325,000 poles and 50 to 55,000 lattice towers. To estimate the number of pictures, it's probably measured in the thousands or tens of thousands for sure. We're beginning to get into this fear more as technology changes, the number increases every year. Historically, as technology has kind of evolved, it's been new. We're, we're beginning to evolve into GIS space with our assets a little bit more. Historically, they've existed in a host of different places. There's no one central area. so trying to get it to where everyone can view it is particularly important to us because one group can leverage it in one way and then another in a totally different way. In terms of drone imagery, it, it's really changing the game in terms of the number of images that we capture. You're able to capture a lot more high resolution photos and see a lot more detail than we previously could. And so as a result of that, you're taking significantly more pictures per structure. And dealing with that data is a challenge that we have to address. In terms of AI, we're exploring a few different technologies inside of transmission. We are beginning to look into some pilots with machine learning for processing images and identifying objects as well as defects, and then also trying to understand the AI in terms of the capture philosophy, which is part of what we're doing today. So on this project with EPRI, we are a partner in this program to look at how automated drone flights can help enhance the data collection process in terms of can we identify the defects and the objects that we're interested in and then do it in a consistent manner that can then be hopefully leveraged into some sort of AI processing server would be the eventual goal. In terms of what we're looking to achieve in an in-state goal, the ideal solution would be no matter how much data we collect, we have an efficient AI algorithm to process it and then deliver that into workable work orders. And that will take quite a while to do, but this is you know, one step along the way in terms of understanding how we begin to build that framework. The project here at New Hill is looking at a, several different approaches to automated drone flights. We're looking at different ways that you can capture imagery on a structure with a pre-planned route. And there have been a host of different technologies that have been demonstrated in terms of approaches to doing that. We're really looking at how to collect the right images to perform a high quality inspection. And we're trying to do that in a unique way where we're leveraging drones, but we're also trying to automate that data collection. And we're doing that to improve efficiency and reduce costs to deploy these technologies. Some of the information that we capture here, though, can be used to train some of these AI models that maybe live on these drones in one day, where you can identify what are the right perspectives in order to do that comprehensive inspection of the structure. The project goal for using AI for automation and inspection is really just to reduce the cost and the time to take that data that you collected in the field and again, turn it into actual information. The, the barriers that I see in, in industry right now is that where we wanna get is a little bit far away than where we are today. 
And the only way for us to get there as an industry is to begin working together and pooling some of our data sets to help train these models to an acceptable level of performance. If you think about all of the different types of components and their different failure modes, any kind of AI model has got to be really robust and complex to handle that many variables. And then when you throw in things like different lighting conditions and the different resolutions of imagery that you're getting, it's a very difficult problem to solve. We're trying to address some of the fundamental gaps that exist in industry today. We're trying to collect, pool, sanitize, and anonymize imagery so that private industry, utilities, academia can use that to build models that utilities can deploy to automate this inspection process. A few additional steps in that include identifying labeling guidance, so what are all the terms and uh, relationships of some of these objects and their defects, as well as hosting tests and crowdsourcing some of the model development. A lot of what I see in industry is that there's pilots going on and that's great, you know, individual companies partnering with individual utilities, but this is an opportunity where a lot of our infrastructure looks exactly the same and a lot of our defects in one service territory are very similar to the other. What EPRI's trying to do is pull those companies together so that we can again accelerate the development of these systems so that they're actually usable. We work in a critical infrastructure industry and one false negative could result in a failure of an asset which could cause a power outage. That's a very high bar for these computer-based systems to meet. The end value of all this collaboration is that it just reduces the timeline of uh, getting to where we want. So there are really two benefits that artificial intelligence can bring to the analysis of transmission and distribution assets. One is in the short term, looking at being able to reduce the load on the staff. And in the long term, we're looking to develop automated workflows for this to automate many of the processes. EPRI is in a unique position because we sit between universities and academia with the utilities and AI vendors. And we're able to provide an independent third party objective analysis of the results to help benchmark and evaluate how these algorithms perform and how they can be adapted and scaled for enterprise-wide adoption. So in terms of scaling this project, it's something of interest for us. Putting it into execution, it will take some time to leverage aerial inspections in a way that gives us a clearer vision of the, what's happening on our system. So we're really interested to see what the results are and then see how applicable that is to what our goals are. Some of the workflows that EPRI is building uh, to leverage AI for other utility applications, uh, it really just comes down to uh, any type of inspection process that you think can be automated. You know, can you automate the data collection via drones and can you automate the data review with artificial intelligence? A lot of what EPRI is doing is kind of foundational. Again, we're not building the end solutions, but we're building the pillars for success, if you would, by data collection, data scrubbing, data labeling, guidance, and then hosting these competitions. We've had a really good opportunity to start in transmission and distribution inspection because we've had historical image data sets for some of our traditional inspection models. That workflow can apply for any utility application that wants to accelerate the development of AI systems.